In the last lecture, which was in the last chapter, we completed building a digital clock that could be customizable to have different faces, basically having different clocks running at the same time. But one of our problems in our construction in that stage was that everything was inside of our constructor. Now you might not think yet that that's an issue, but it is, because as we progress into the next chapter as well, we're going to want to be able to create inheritance, which basically means having something that could override our methods. And to do that, we really need to be able to make those methods really belong to be part of that function, part of that constructor. To do that, we're going to use a property that's called prototype. And in many ways, if you've worked in other languages, it's kind of like private and public, but not really. The most important thing that we're going to get out of this lesson is we're going to revisit the functions, that methods, really, that we've created and take them out of our constructor. And that's going to help us throughout the remainder of this chapter and the chapters to come. So let's jump into it and see how we do that. Already right now, you could pride yourself in saying that you know how to build object-oriented programming, objects in general. But our problem with our object right now is we said in the, as we finished the last chapter that it's not really efficient. And we want to make it more efficient. And one of the problems with the efficiencies of the clock is that all the methods are built right into the clock itself directly, making it impossible for us if we want to in the future, expand this clock and basically connect it to be inherited. So if we want to create an alarm clock later on, it would be really hard for us because all the functionality of this clock is locked in. And really that is going to be one of our main topics. So to be able to do that, the first step that we have to do is we have to remove these methods from within the actual constructor itself and move it into the to stand alone on their own. But if we just create it this way, it's not really going to work. Although, if I just go ahead and copy the name of the object itself that we're bound to create, and add that clock name instead of the this, it will come back and work. But we're going to have a few issues. So if I go ahead and save, one of the issues are, is that when we try to call the update clock, among a few other issues, this function doesn't exist inside of the constructor. Because only after the constructor is completed, then the reference to update clock and format digits gets created. So if I go ahead here and just even comment out all this stuff, and you know, let me show you that there is an error before to, you know, make sure that you're with me and agree with me. So if I go ahead here, and I'm just going to drop in chapter three into our HTML page, and I'm just going to grab it, chapter three, and you'll see that we're getting an error. First of all, it's just not finding update clock. So I'm going to go ahead and just comment out all this update clock logic for a second. And don't worry, we're going to solve this problem soon. And I want to show you that if I just go ahead to any of the clocks, and I try to check and see, do you, Mr. Clock, have the method format digits? You know, the specific clock, you know, even clock three for that matter. If I go ahead and try to see, do you have this method? The answer that is going to come back is going to be very, very clear. No, it doesn't. And you might ask yourself, why doesn't it have that object? And the answer is very simple is because the only item that actually owns this function that only exists is actually the clock itself. So if I go ahead and I just try to approach the actual clock constructor and say, hey, Mr. Clock, do you have this digital format? And if we click on save and go there and we click on refresh, we're going to see that that function is owned by that actual object constructor. And that is why we don't have access to it at all. But that's not what we really want to happen. What we want to happen is that whenever a new constructor, a new object is being created, that it will automatically duplicate itself into that item. Now to do that, once we're outside of the constructor, we can't just approach the this anymore because there is no this outside. And we have to basically type clock, the name of the object that is, dot prototype, dot whatever function name we want. I'm going to go ahead and do that also for the secondary item. And once we do that, we will have now reference and access to the item. But that's not enough. Because now that we have reference and access to the item itself, and it does have access even in the constructor zone itself, the access itself is not going to be good enough because we have here a lot of variables that we're referring to, such as the this offset construction, the different variables that we're going to see. So if I just go ahead here and I just even save it, click on refresh and just follow the errors, we'll see that first of all, we're not actually, we, we didn't save. So let me just go ahead and save here, go back and click on refresh and just follow the errors. We'll see, okay, error number one, offset is not defined. 
Why is offset not defined? Because I actually didn't update that offset here. I'm still using that offset that we were hard coding, using that property that was coming through the constructor. But that variable doesn't exist once we're outside of that scope of that method. So to gain access to the variable that I actually want, I'm going to use the word this and then offset, which will give me access to this offset. Let's continue. So besides that problem, we have also a problem of the ID itself, which we don't have access to. So to gain access to it, I'm going to go ahead and create access, create a new property and set that property to be the value of the variable that's being sent in. And now that I have access to it, I could literally just go ahead and say, hey, this dot ID, get me this dot ID. So let's see if there's any other variables that are not in scope. And we see we have a little error here on line 26. So I'm going to go ahead to line 26 and see what did I do wrong here. I added here an extra uh, open bracket, which is not good. Um, and by the way, it didn't give me exactly the line of the error, but that's fine because it gave me the scope of the zone itself. And I knew that I did work on here. So it was really easy to find and fix. So we're going to click on refresh. And the next item is label that isn't defined. So we're going to go ahead and add label into our object as well. Now you might think to yourself, well, this is a lot more code. Why would I actually want to do this? And let me turn on for some reason, my word wrap got turned off again. And I'm going to go ahead here and just set this dot label, save it. And let's see if there's any other errors. I believe that that would do it. And now all of our object is running and everything is back to working the way we would want it to work. Now, before we dive deeper into the world of prototypes, which is an amazing world on its own, I want to go back into our object here and figure out a way how to make it more efficient. Because calling the new date object every single round is very not efficient. And we are going to find a better way of approaching it in the next lecture as we learn a little bit about new things. So we'll see you in the next lecture when we learn about new things.